We're now going to look at some examples of calculating double integrals over type 1 and type 2 regions. Our first example is to calculate the double integral over d of x cosine y dA, where d is this region. So the lower edge is the curve or the line y equals 0. The right edge is the line x equals 1. And the upper boundary curve is the parabola y equals x squared. Now is this d a type 1 region or a type 2 region? Well, actually it's both. So d is both type 1 and type 2. So it's type 1 because um, x goes from 0 to 1, and for any given value of x, if we look at the um, possible y values, then those comprise a single interval. That's what makes it a type 1 region. So for a given x, y varies between x between y equals 0 and between y equals x squared. It's also a type 2 region because y goes from 0 up to 1. This is the point 1 comma 1 up here. And for a given y value, the possible x values also form a single interval. Um, and from the perspective of a type 2 region, the left boundary curve, instead of writing y equals x squared, I could write this as x equals the square root of y. So y goes from 0 to 1, and x goes from the square root of y to 1. OK, so now let's evaluate this integral. So using the formula for a type 1 region, so I get that the double integral over d of x cosine y dA is what? So for the outer integral, I have to put the possible range of x. So the minimum possible value of x is 0. So this here is x equals 0. And the maximum possible value is x equals 1. So the x range is from 0 to 1. Now, what about the y limits? Well, now you have to say, let's suppose that x is fixed. And what are the possible values of y? So for a given value of, of x, then the y possible y values form an interval like this. So it starts at x equals 0, and it goes up to sorry, it starts at y equals 0, and it goes up to y equals x squared. So the y limits are start at y equals 0 and go up to y equals x squared. OK, now we put in the function that we're supposed to integrate and dy dx. OK, now let's evaluate the innermost integral. So the outer integral sign, nothing happens, and the integral I have to integrate x cosine y with respect to y. So x is like a constant. I just have to integrate cosine y, and that's x sine y. And now I have to evaluate this at the two limits. And the limits are the upper limit is y equals x squared, and the lower limit is y equals 0. So I'm going to evaluate this and get something, and then I have to integrate that result over x. OK, so. When I evaluate x sine y at these two limits, I get x sine of x squared minus x sine of 0, and sine of 0 is 0, so there's nothing else I need to write, and I put a dx. OK, now how do we integrate x times sine of x squared? Well, we might notice that this is minus the derivative, or well, up to some constant, it's the, it's the derivative of cosine of x squared. So the correct constant is minus a half cosine of x squared. Because when you differentiate this, you get minus sine of x squared times 2x. And then this minus a half makes the factor come out right here. And we have to evaluate this at x equals 1 and x equals 0. So I get minus 1 half cosine of 1, with some weird number, um, plus a half. So that's the answer. OK, now we could also use the fact that this is a type 2 region to evaluate the integral a different way. 
So if we use the type 2 version, what do we do? Well, first we put in the possible range of y. So the maximum value of y here, so this is the point 1 comma 1, so the maximum value of y is 1. So we have the integral as y goes from 0 to 1, and then for a given value of y, we have to say what is the range of x. So for a given value of y, x goes over an interval like this. And the interval starts at x equals the square root of y and goes up to x equals 1. So I put in lower limit x equals square root of y, upper limit x equals 1. And now I put my function in as before. But now we are integrating over um, x first, so dx dy. So now I evaluate the inner integral, so I leave the outer integral alone. So now y is like a constant, um, and I'm just integrating over x. So I have 1 half x squared cosine y evaluated at um, x equals 1 and x equals square root of y it's an x um, and this will be some number depending on y so I put a dy out there okay now I evaluate this thing so I get for x equals 1 I just get a half cosine y and when x is the square root of y, I get minus one half um, y cosine y. Then I have to integrate this whole thing over y. All right. Now this is a little bit messy. So the, the integrating cosine y is is no problem, but to integrate y cosine y, you have to do some integration by parts. So you can do this, it's a little more complicated. But if you do it and come out alive, you should get the same answer as we got over here. But in general, if a region is both type 1 and type 2, then often integrating it in one direction is easier than integrating it in the other direction. Sometimes even one of the ways to integrate is essentially impossible using any functions you've ever heard of. And so you have to switch the order and integrate it in the other direction. We'll see some examples of this as we go along. Okay, so here's our next example. Our next example is to calculate the double integral of x, y, d, a over this region d. So d is a quarter of the unit disk. Okay, so we have to get the correct limits here. So again, this is both type 1 and type 2 um, because if you if you fix a value of x, then the y values form a single interval, so that makes it a type 1 region. And if you fix a value of y, then the possible values of x form a single interval, and that makes it a type 2 region. In fact, there's sort of a perfect symmetry between x and y here, so the calculation is going to look the same no matter which way we do it. Let's do it the type 1 way. So. And the outer integral, we have to put in the total range of x. So the, the lower or the left boundary of this region is where x equals 0. So the lower limit of x is x equals 0. And the rightmost point on this region is the point 1 comma 0. So the upper limit of x is 1. Now for given x, what are the y limits? Well, so here's, let's fix x. So this point here at the bottom is the point x comma 0. And this point here, well, we have to solve for y using the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. So x is what it is, and y is the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay. So the upper limit, the lower limit of y is 0, and the upper limit of y is the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now we put in our function xy and dy dx. Okay, so let's evaluate the inner integral. So we're integrating over y, so x is like a constant. 
So I have x, y squared over 2 evaluated at y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared and y equals 0. And then whatever we get, we integrate that over x. Okay, so doing this evaluation, um, so when y is equals the square root of 1 minus x squared, I get x times 1 minus x squared over 2. And then I have to subtract what I get when y equals 0, but that's just 0. Okay, so I integrate this over dx. So this is the integral from 0 to 1. Let's just expand it out a little bit. Um, x over 2 minus x cubed over 2 dx. So integrating x over 2, I get x squared over 4. And integrating x cubed over 2, um, I get x to the 4 over 8. Um, and then evaluating this at 1 and 0, I get um, x equals 1 gives me a fourth minus an eighth. x equals 0 gives me nothing, so this is an eighth. And as I said, you could do this um, as a type 2 integral, and then the calculation would look exactly the same. Just everywhere you see the letter x, you replace it with the letter y, and vice versa. Okay, let's do one more example. So the third example is to evaluate this iterated integral. Okay, so the inner integral is over x. We're supposed to integrate y cosine of x squared from um, x equals y squared to x equals 9. And then we'll get some function which depends on y, and then we'll need to integrate that over y. Okay, so what's the integral of cosine of x squared? Well, I have no idea. So you know, we can't integrate this in terms of elementary functions. So this is an example where we're going to need to change the order of integration. So maybe if we integrate over y first instead, it might be more manageable. So to change the order of integration, we have to understand the domain that we're integrating over. So what is this integral telling us? Well, it's telling us the outer integral, y is going from 0 to 3. So the maximum possible value of y is 3, and the minimum possible value of y is 0. And the inner integral, for a given value of y, x is going from y squared to 9. So we start, so here's the curve um, x equals y squared. It looks like this. This picture is not really to scale. And then the right limit of x is x equals 9. So this is the point um, 9 comma 3. So that's why my picture is not to scale. It should be further to the right. But whatever, you get the idea. Okay, so, so this integral is saying that um, for a given value of y, we integrate x starting at x equals y squared and going up to x equals 9 like this. So that's, that's what this equation is saying. Now we want to change the order of integration and instead integrate over y first. So for a given value of x, we say what is the range of y? Well, so the lower limit here is y equals 0. And the upper limit, well, instead of writing this as x equals y squared, I could write this as y equals the square root of x. So we can change the order to write this as the integral as x goes from 0 to 9, and y goes from 0 to the square root of x of y cosine of x squared dy dx. Okay, now this inner integral is fine because the cosine of x squared 
which we don't know what to do with, is now a constant. So I just have to integrate y. So this is the integral from 0 to 9 of y squared over 2 cosine of x squared evaluated at y equals the square root of x and y equals 0, and then integrate that whole thing over dx. Okay, so doing this evaluation, uh, when y equals the square root of x, y squared is x, so this is x over 2 cosine of x squared, and then when y equals 0, I just get 0. Okay, so now I have to integrate this over x. Okay, now we're happy, because now we see that this, up to some constant, is the derivative of sine of x squared. Because now, instead of integrating cosine of x squared by itself, which is basically impossible, we're now integrating cosine of x squared times x, which we can do. So this is going to be sine of x squared over 4, right? Because when I differentiate this, I get cosine of x squared times 2x. Okay, and now I evaluate this at x equals 9 and x equals 0. So at x equals 9, I get sine of 81 over 4. So it's some weird number. At, at x equals 0, I just get 0. So this is our final answer, sine of 81 over 4.